Good morning. I'm so glad you could join me today. Yesterday in our Unfolding the Word series in 1 Peter, we began looking at the second chapter, verses 9 and 10, which spoke to us about a changed status in our lives as a result of coming to know Christ. Let me read those verses again, and we'll continue examining, unfolding what these verses have to say. Verse 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. <laughs> Again, this is all about what happens in the life of an individual when they've turned to Christ in repentance and faith, made him the cornerstone of their life, obeyed the gospel. This passage tells us that four things happened that changed radically the status we had in our lives. The formula is one that says, once you were not, but now you are. And so each of the four things we're looking at were characteristics of things that we weren't, but now are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, as we were looking at this, we looked at the first of those things, that once we were not a people, but now we are a chosen race. <laughs> we once didn't belong anywhere, but now we are citizens of the kingdom, citizens of heaven, God's chosen people, because of what Jesus did as our cornerstone, what he did on our behalf. Now let's continue to build on that foundation and look today at some more of these changes, our change status or status. The second one we encounter here is he says, you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Our status has changed dramatically. Our old status was this. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 said, well, we were by nature objects of wrath. <laughs> Meaning we were hopeless. We were sinners cut off from God. Our sin separated us from God. We couldn't even come into his presence. That was the reality of all who have stumbled over the cornerstone instead of turning to Christ as the cornerstone of their life. We were by nature objects of wrath, unable to enter the very presence of God. But you see what's happened here? Our new status as his children is now we have become a royal priesthood. <laughs> Back earlier in the second chapter, we were talking about the fact how there's no special class of priest in the New Testament era because of what Christ has done. He's made all of us priests. We're all in that status, in that category. Now we find not only are we priests, but we are a royal priesthood. Now what does that mean? That means we're not just carrying out a general ministry of priesthood, but we are priests of the ruler. We are the priests of the king of kings. There, it's a spe, there's a special place, a special class of priests who served the ruling monarch, the, the king. In this case, we serve the king of kings. <laughs> we are a royal priesthood, a priesthood of all believers. And at that, it's a priesthood that's a royal priesthood of all believers. By the way, it's a promised outcome of the gospel. In first in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 6, listen to these words. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. That's a promised outcome of the gospel that was to come through the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in his death on the cross, and the change that would come about for those who repent and believe and trust him as Savior. We are changed people, priests now, priests of the Most High. <laughs> All of us are. Not just that one group of Levite, that one tribe of Levites in the Old Testament under Israel. Then within the Levites, we were not just that one group of priests descended from Aaron. No, no. We are all priests. And we are all royal priests. 
And the irony of this is that not only are we royal priests, but in point of fact, because we've been adopted into the very family of God, we are not only royal priests, but we are part of the royal family. It just gets more astounding and astounding, doesn't it? <laughs> A change status. We who once were objects of wrath, as Ephesians 2 puts it, have not only been redeemed, we've been made priests, royal priests of the King of Kings, and adopted into the very royal family itself. <laughs> Talk about once you were not, but now you are. Once we were not any of those things, but now we are. Isn't that a beautiful picture? We were once not a people. We've become a chosen race. We were once objects of wrath, but now we are a royal priesthood in what Christ has done and continues to be doing for us as his children. Well, that's not all he's telling us here. We encounter in verse, the, the verse goes on and he says, not only are you a chosen race, a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation. God has declared us as his people now, as part of his kingdom, we are a holy nation. Talk about dramatic change of status. What was our old status? Unholy? <laughs> Who could claim otherwise? We were unholy. We were really a wandering group of misfits in this world. Isn't that an apt description of who you are or were and who I was? Misfits <laughs> and failing ones at that, unholy ones. Our new status, now you're a holy nation, a holy nation. God has worked a miracle to enable us, now as the redeemed New Testament church, believers and recipients, living stones being built into that spiritual house. He has said, listen, one of the things that's going to be true of you now is that you are a holy nation, a holy nation, a righteous one set apart for me. In Exodus chapter, 15, chapter 19, verses 5 to 6, God describes his great intention for Israel in this way, ethnic Israel. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all the people, for all of the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Sound familiar? Well, it is familiar. But what it's telling us now in 1 Peter is that the redeemed in the New Testament church living stones being built into this spiritual house. We are now what Israel failed to be. We are now a holy nation. We are now a kingdom of priests. We are now a chosen race. All of these things, not because we're so good, not because we had better effort than Israel had, but because of the mercy of God expressed through the cross. It is our justification before God, the righteousness of Christ being granted to us, all tied to the love and mercy of God, the grace of God, that change like this is possible. As a result, you and I can truly be said to be part of a holy nation. Oh, all of us have a ways to go to be all that God wants us to be. <laughs> but the fact is, our true homeland, our true nation, our true kingdom, is in fact a holy kingdom. And we are holy in it because of what Christ has done for us. As Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, our citizenship is in heaven. Once you were not, now you are. Once where you were not a chosen race, now you are a chosen race. Once you were not a royal priesthood, in fact, far from it, now you are a royal priesthood. Once you were not a holy nation, you were a wandering group of misfits, rebels against God. <laughs> now you are a holy nation, part of the very kingdom of God, citizenship in heaven, because of the mercy and grace of God. Aren't these amazing truths? Well, it's not even finished yet. Join me tomorrow as we look at the fourth 
of these wonderful changes that come for those who have made Christ their cornerstone. Join me then, won't you? God bless.